Well, I'll tell you what, um, what really struck me very strongly was when we first created this piece, Red Hot Patriot, the kick-ass wit of Molly Ivins, we built the show uh, first in the Philadelphia Theatre Company. And I had met Molly several times. Our, our activism brought us together in terms of protection of the First Amendment, in terms of women's rights, uh, areas in which, we, which she was very active and, and I am as well. What I learned, one thing I learned in Philadelphia was that many of people in the Northeast were not nearly as well acquainted with Molly's work, with her columns. Although she was in 400 some papers, after she was fired by the New York Times many years ago, it was a little discouraged to run her, to, to take her on in the Northeast. So I had all these people coming up to me in Philadelphia saying that I had essentially int introduced her to them, which I, I hadn't really anticipated. I guess I just kind of assumed that people were much more knowledgeable about her. But the most thrilling thing was when her brother and another day when her sister came and they came backstage and like Molly, they are very tall, big people. So they rather, you know, wrapped me in these bear hugs and, uh, and they were crying and they said, thank you for keeping her alive. And that was really quite wonderful. And I thought, well, I, at the very least, I am, I am representing her truly to them, in their eyes. One of our biggest tasks was to try and winnow down the amount of material that we had to work with. I mean, all the books and the years of columns to try and, and, and then to, to find the information that would pertain to the arc of uh, the storyline of her life as well. Because in dramatizing a character like Molly Ivins, you, you don't want to simply recite what she wrote, in which case, why go to the theater? Why not just, you know, pick up one of her books? We want to create a sense of her life and, and the passage through her life. Uh, so to find material that would pertain to each stage of it was the beginning structure. I suppose, um, I mean, I'm not, I don't set out to mimic or to impersonate, you know. A, to me, she is a character that I am acting, that I am portraying. The fact that she was real and that I actually got to meet her is a gift. But I don't think I would approach it any differently were she totally fictional. I, I think, well, she writes that right, you know, from, from an early, from college age, she was in direct conflict with her father and his beliefs. He was, you know, oil, an oil and gas man in Houston, in Texas, quite wealthy or well enough and uh, tremendously conservative and to her mind, of course, intoler you know, intolerant. What Molly did by, when she went into journalism, that may have been, you know, um, a rebellious choice. She wanted to learn and to expose the prejudices and the intolerances that she was, you know, instinctively fighting against in her own family life. But where her choices led her was to really, in a way, sacrifice um, a lot of money, uh, she could have been a tremendous personality and, uh, and, a, and a very well paid, you know. Instead, she chose the riskier route of telling the truth or exposing, ridiculing uh, the hypocrisy of others, regardless of the cost to her, which was her position at the New York Times, which was a certain degree of, well, I mean, she said that 
you know, all these little victories were a thin blanket to cover for not having had a husband, kids, money, most everything most people want. So she knew that the choices she was making to expose, you know, the wrongs would cost her uh, on, on a certain level. And she, she went that route. One thing I've learned from her, and I want to keep, is she writes uh, and spoke uh, by saying, beloveds. She would start a column or end a club and column by saying, you know, beloved. Or in a speech, she would say, now, beloved. And I believe she had that capacity, this huge sense of just throwing her arms around the whole world, but particularly Americans. She loved Americans. She loved this country, you know, and everything that we stand for in our hearts. Uh, she, I want that kind of huge heart that I sensed in her and that I read in her. Uh, her sense of the, the incredible privilege of being a citizen of the United States of America. And this is something that I can truly, I truly feel because I grew up until college age outside of the United States. My father was a foreign service officer. And overseas, away from the United States, we had a tremendous, tremendous expat, we called it, you know, expatriate, meaning Americans living outside the country. Not that you'd given up your, you know, your patriotism, no, no, no. But Americans living outside the country. Uh, I don't know any group of people that's more fervently patriotic than Americans who, who don't get to live in America. Uh, and, and I, you know, that struck a true chord with me, her fierce, her, her great, the honor and the privilege of being a citizen of this country.